This is our pure water demonstration trailer where we're demonstrating treatment technology to take recycled water to drinking water quality. This is a grant funded project through the Colorado Water Conservation Board. Reusing water um, in a potable sense is part of the state's water plan and we wanted to be, be behind that and support that concept. If you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. This project has been an incredible demonstration of collaboration across many fronts in the industry. We represent the utility piece of this industry. We're also partnered with Colorado School of Mines, which is one of the premier educational institutions in this state. We immediately agreed and we came up with a few ideas how to do it. The idea was uh, that we started the design process together with Colorado Springs Utilities and Corolla Engineers. Now they're one of the leading uh, water industry consultants uh, nationally and even worldwide. Saw that there really was some potential to form this pretty unique partnership between them. And then we were fortunate enough to be chosen to do the design work for the facility. You know, our partnership extends uh, to the state level with the Colorado Department of Health and Environment. They've supported this project from the beginning. The CDPHE is responsible for water quality regulations, and so we are uh, making sure that this direct potable reuse rule creates requirements that, that make the drinking water safe for the public. All those industry components have collaborated and worked together to make this a successful project, and we're looking forward to how it's going to advance the industry from a regulatory perspective, from a educational and outreach perspective, and just continuing to prove that the technology works. Welcome to the trailer. All the, the construction here was mainly done by uh, a few students and uh, faculty and technical staff. Most of the components are simple to get, again, off the shelf. These are existing technologies. Uh, we had to customize them to fit into a small space. Overall, it shouldn't take more than four to six months to build a trailer like that. Those costs of that technology are coming down steadily over time, and that makes it more cost-effective, more affordable. Water reuse has been around in Colorado for at least six decades. Very quickly, we're seeing more and more interest. The technology has evolved quite a bit, allowing us to get to a point where we can very confidently uh, produce water that we know is safe for our human consumption from a recycled water source. Like any equipment, this equipment shouldn't sit idle. This equipment needs to keep running all the time in order to make sure that we demonstrate that the processes are sustainable, that they are robust, that they can produce water continuously at very high quality. So this is the first step in the process. Water directly from the back end of this treatment facility comes in here to a pre-filtration step. After that, water flows through uh, the system and here interacts our first real significant treatment process where ozone that we use in the process to do a couple of things. First, it's to break down organic compounds into smaller compounds. The other benefit that ozone provides is it's a disinfectant and it kills pathogens. So as we move through the contactor here, the water comes into contact with ozone, and then it travels into the next step of our process, biologically active filtration. As water flows through the media, those microorganisms are able to consume those organic compounds. And think of the compounds that create odors and smells and yucky tastes. That's what we're removing from the water through this process. Then we move over into our next step of the process here called microfiltration. In this case, the microfiltration filter is made of a special ceramic that's fired in a way so that we get uniform hole sizes or pores in it that are really small, about the size of one one hundredth diameter of your hair. So you can imagine how small that is and what kind of particles that would be taking out of the water. Next, we move to these granular activated carbon filters, which have the same media as this, but their purpose is a little different. These little particles of uh, carbon or charcoal, if you will, have a very high surface area associated with them. 
and they provide the ability to adsorb uh, chemicals and compounds to them. So household cleaning agents, those types of things that might make it through the rest of the process are readily adsorbed onto the surface of this carbon or removed from the liquid stream. Our next to last step, we're using ultraviolet light, both for disinfection, so to kill viruses and other pathogens. And then on top of it, we're feeding hydrogen peroxide here. And that hydrogen peroxide, along with the UV light, creates a strong oxidant to remove other chemical compounds of concern. Then in the final step, we add add chlorine, not because we need to disinfect anymore, but because we want to keep the water if we're going to store it that needs to have a chlorine residual by uh, state law or drinking water regulations. Um, this process from front to back is about a five gallon per minute process. So it's a really kind of small scale, uh, but these treatment processes, all of them, can be scaled up to literally millions of gallons a day of treatment. And it would look very similar in terms of the configuration and the steps. Um, but would just be much larger in terms of what it's housed in. We're going to be able to measure and understand the performance of each one of these processes through a very highly sophisticated instrumentation and monitoring system. We have a number of instruments here measuring key water quality parameters that help us understand the performance of each of these uh, processes that I took you through. Then we can take that data and understand how to optimize the performance even further of these treatment processes. Colorado Springs Utilities has been a great partner. One of the things that we see um, that's embodied here is that they're really forward thinkers. And this does benefit certainly the community in Colorado Springs, but it's got a much broader impact. One of the things that we wanted to do as a you know, representative of the industry was to create a pay it forward type asset that not only we could use as Colorado Springs Utilities, but that other communities uh, along the Front Range and throughout Colorado could use, because this is an important concept for water supply in Colorado overall. What we do see in the industry is whenever a larger utility invests in a project like this, it ends up helping the entire region. The small under-resourced community can really utilize information from a project like this to show the public and even to convince themselves that it's a safe process. It just makes sense that we take the next steps to do direct potable reuse. The technology is there, um, the demand is there. You know, we, we live in a drought ridden state um, in the arid climate where we you know, face supply challenges. We need to teach engineers how to come with innovative solutions to treating water at low cost, low energy footprint, but with very high quality. And I think that this project demonstrate how we can incorporate students uh, and faculty and utilities and communities together to go after a target of demonstrating that water recycling is possible.